Welcome to the Kayla studio. Thank you so much. It's yes. good to be with you guys. Phil, look, you made a big announcement the other day. I did. But we're not going to get to that yet. No, we're not. Because I want to ask you the worst question to ever be asked. Oh, I'm sure no. any artist, you guys talk about this at your reunions. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. I'm scared. Phil Wickham, tell me one thing about yourself that nobody knows. Oh my goodness. It is the worst question, <laughs> right? isn't it? One thing about myself that nobody knows. I have read the Lord of the Rings trilogy twice. Somebody's got to know that, Phil. Well, I actually don't. Pro- I, well, my Lord of the Rings friends do. <laughs> Are you in a club, Phil? I'm on a, te- I'm on a text thread, okay? okay. Not a, a it's, it's not a club. <laughs> <laughs> not a club. There's a text thread that started when the Lord of the Rings TV show yeah. went live. Okay. A few people that I know. Okay. Remain, remain, remain nameless. And you've read through the series twice. I have. I read it as a, as a young high school kid. Okay. And uh, fell in love with it. But then when the movies all like were kind of in full swing yeah, when yeah. I, in my early 20s, I read it again. Okay. I need to do it again, though. It's been a while. How does it feel? My early 20s was something. just a few years ago. <laughs> um, how, does it, how does what feel? I mean, you just said something that nobody I t- knows. I, I picked something really safe, didn't I? It feels oh. great. It feels great to finally be out. I am a Lord of the Rings fan. There's lots of, <laughs> there's lots of parallels between Lord of the Rings and the gospel. There's so many. I'm sure there are. I mean, Tolkien was, I'm sure there are. <laughs> there's good all and evil and the stuff, good wins in the end and, and sacrificial love and all that stuff. There's Samuels in both. Yes. You know, there's no Bilbo Baggins in, no Bilbo Baggins. in the Bible, but. But there is uh, Zacchaeus. He was tiny. There you go. There we go. See? There you know. All the same. You might have been a hobbit. Okay. We're warmed up. Okay, we're Phil here. Wickham has given we're us here. the giraffe right here. We're here. <laughs> Well, let's jump in. Um, Current, we're going to wait till that announcement because that's that's going to be like the cherry on top right now. But you have watched from a very up close perspective um, what everybody is going to the theaters to see right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus Revolution. Yes. Yes. Because Pastor Greg Laurie, who the whole movie is based upon, that's your personal pastor. Am I right here? It's it's definitely a personal friend and I've been involved with this church for a long time. Okay. Um, But for several reasons, I'm very closely tied with that story. Uh For sure, Greg, who's kind of the main character as a young boy in the movie, um, has become a dear friend of mine and we've ministered together many times. Yeah. But also, um, Chuck Smith, who it's his church, Cave Chapel. That's the the church I grew up at for the first 13 years of my life. Um, my parents were the worship leaders right kind of maybe five years after that movie's done became yeah. the worship leaders of that church Okay, because they both got saved by Lonnie Frisbee in that whole S- Jesus revolution thing. My parents were, my, I don't think they were quite old enough to be hippies. Yeah. Like my dad was 15. My mom was 18 when, okay. and respectively when they came, but that's how they heard about Jesus. That's where they came to know the Lord. They got baptized and I did too. That cove right there that's in the movie. Pirates Cove. Yeah, that's where my parents got baptized and my dad would sing worship songs while people got baptized and and uh, fast forward a few years later when I was eight, I got baptized there. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of my history, the reason why I'm a, I exist, yeah. let alone the reason why I know Jesus and have such great examples of what it means to follow Jesus and my parents mm-hmm. is because of um, this amazing move of God yeah. that happened in the 70s. And so it's it was so cool to watch it. Um, I got to get a little sneak peek um, that I got to bring my parents to. It was me uh, and my parents and Greg and some yeah. other people that were really closely tied to the movie uh, a few months ago. And it was just, it was kind of wild sitting there and seeing it portrayed, but like sitting around with all the people <laughs> in the movie and some of the That's actors surreal. were there. It was just just amazing, you know? And well, I think my favorite part about the movie, there's so lots of great things to say about it, yeah. which I'm so thankful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but is that... The way they made it, it's obviously set in the 70s, mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel like it's this distant thing that no. happened to people that you can't relate to. But it feels like all it takes is some people to stand up and say, I found the treasure of all treasures and it's Jesus. And all it yeah. takes is, and the Holy Spirit moving. It's like, that could be today, you know? And yeah. I believe it will be today and I'm believing for that, you know? What is, I think that this movie, because you've had a front row seat to so many of these people that this movie is talking about. Um, I think a lot of people are going to watch this movie and there's going to be a stirring inside of them of like, I want to tell people about Jesus, but it's not something that they've ever done or practiced. Phil Wickham, what is one question or conversation starter that you have found to be just a great entry point? If somebody wants to kind of put their toe in that and say, man, I want to be more bold. You know what? I've, I've, I grew up in Christian world. You know, I grew up youth group kid 
And I grew up thinking there's this pressure to like be a great preacher mm. or have all the right verses memorized or have like my 15 minute sermon that I was going to give to someone who cracked the door open about spirituality. Yeah, with three points. Yes. And yes. I was always nervous and felt pressured and felt like I'm going to mess this up. Mm. And as I've grown up and I've l- learned about myself and the Lord and had conversations with people, I've realized how much power and how much truth is in this scripture where it says they will talking about the church, Mm -hmm. they will overcome by the blood of the lamb, Mm -hmm. which is Jesus shed blood on the cross. It's already happened. It's done. We're standing in that victory today. Sweet. We're standing in a place of victory already. Mm -hmm. And you know it, then the word of their testimony Mm -hmm. and what a beautiful, incredible verse that is because it empowers each one of us uh, to share our stories of God's life and love and grace intervening with our lives. And it's not just the moment we said the sinner's prayer or we said, Jesus, I want to follow you. But it's all those moments of remember when we prayed and we didn't have enough money and then that guy gave us money and now we could, we could, we could pay our bills or remember when we were so sick, but we thought, you know, all this, all these moments of God's grace and life intervening is God's testimony of life and grace in our life. Yeah. And what I've found is instead of thinking myself as a preacher, mm-hmm. but think of myself as a carrier of the joy and hope of Jesus. Mm. Um, and that's just who I am. Yeah. It's not so, like, I don't put that on. It's like, oh, someone just asked about heaven. I got to <laughs> be the hope and carrier of Jesus now. It's just like, I'm just, I'm just so, so thankful. Mm. I've found, and so many of you listeners out there, all, many of you listeners out there, we have found Jesus follower. You have found the treasure of all treasures. Yeah. You found that thing that Jesus talks about. Like if you, if you find it in a field and you, you, you see this treasure that's buried there. You sell everything you have to go and buy that field. Everybody thinks you're crazy, but you know what's down there. And you mm. give everything for that thing because you know it's the most important thing and the most beautiful thing. And, mm. and God has given that. And it's, it's called salvation. It's called Jesus. It's called the kingdom of heaven that we get to enter into. <laughs> and so then if I'm going from a place of like, so this is what the Bible says, and you're a sinner, and we're all sinners, and heaven and hell, and do you want to pray the prayer with me now? You yeah. know, if I go from that to saying, my goodness, I had a great day today. I got mm. to talk to a friend, uh, a friend about Jesus, and Jesus has become this huge thing in my life. I mean, I, I didn't even know it when I was a kid, but but now like Jesus has shown me everything, what it means to live and to love, and I'm just so thankful that in this crazy world, I get to wake up every morning with hope. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to leave it there. And usually <laughs> people are like, tell me more. Yeah. Because I think um, it does, it's not just Jesus followers. It's not just Caleb listeners that are looking at Instagram and Facebook and Mm -hmm. the news and seeing this world feel like it's getting crazier and crazier and searching and clamoring for hope and purpose Mm -hmm. and reason. Mm -hmm. And Jesus follower, listener, me, you, we have it. Mm -hmm. Like we have the treasure. Yeah. And we're not, I'm not going to cram it down someone's into someone's life. No, but I'm going to share, I'm going to show it off. Yeah. I'm going to share it. If anybody wants to hold it and see it, it's like, here you go. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I get a cool, kind of a cool door open because I'm the guy like walking through the airport with a guitar and people are like, you in a band? It's like, no, I just sing about Jesus, you know? <laughs> um, I sing, you know, yeah, I like Jesus a lot. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it is. You want to talk about him? Cool. You want to play you a know? song? I got a song. Yeah, I got a song. <laughs> this is amazing grace. <laughs> Um, anyway, I just I, watch out. Some of those airports, you might start like a flash mob because people I, are like, I'll, I know that I'll, rec- song. I'll take it. That yeah. sounds amazing. You That'd know? Cool. Yeah, just, I just, I feel more positive than ever Obviously, there's people that don't want to hear about Jesus. Sure. And that's that's what's going to happen. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay. But I feel more positive than ever about me, that we have the treasure of all treasures mm-hmm. and the hope of all hopes yeah. and that people want to hear about it yeah. in a way that's loving and kind and normal and conversational. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is me. Mm-hmm. And if you want, you want, you can have it too if you want it. You yeah. know? So I don't know. That was a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it's it's actually like the biggest thing I feel like God has been showing me lately. I yeah. got to lead a car salesman to the Lord three days ago because she, because she just was looking for for reason. Yeah, and and she pulled out this book and she's a Middle Eastern lady. Okay, and she pulled out this book. She says someone gave me this in Farsi. It's the New Testament, but I don't really know about Jesus. But he seems like such a great guy. I'm like, well, let's talk about him. That's crazy. Fifteen minutes later, we're crying and she's accepting uh. Jesus into her heart. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is crazy, you know and. And the reason why we started talking about it was because I she found out what that I was a musician. I sang about Jesus, so yeah. we started talking about it. So, um, just me being me, yeah. And then you want to let's do this, yeah. kind of thing, you know. So it just happens. That is so cool. It's so cool. Did you buy the car? <laughs> yes. We our, our last car. I had a, I, I did not buy the car after a, that. <laughs> I had a 2012 Audi Q5 that okay. was 
totaled not because I got in an accident, but because the ga- I needed a new engine. Yeah. And the guy's like, this is going to cost more than your car, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I, honey, we need a new car. And yeah. so... It, and it was crazy too, because we we wanted to we wanted to get it used, and didn't want to have to pay all the extra money for the new one. And new ones are so hard to find now, and we had to drive like an hour and a half to this special this one dealership, you know, up in Orange County. And the guy who was helping us out couldn't help us, just so I could be with this lady. I feel like the Lord love just loved that. her so much, yeah, that she he wanted her to know about him, and, yeah. Um, and I would just say like be open. It's I think it's like people with the testimony, mm-hmm. and I don't mean like people that went to prison because they were in a gang and no. all that, you know, that, that stuff too. But people, even you grew up in church and you, you never really had a crazy spell, but God just saved you and you believe in him. You have a crazy testimony of God's goodness yeah. that you wake up every day with hope mm. and life and love. And just, I would just wake up like who, who needs to hear about hope? Who needs a smile? Who needs to hear Jesus loves you? You know, when I get my coffee or I'm just, I'm so, I, I feel like the Lord is, opening my heart to that in a new way. That's why I'm talking about it so long. I love this. I mean, you right now are listening to this interview, but if you were standing here in studio with Phil and I, you would just feel the joy coming from you, Phil. There is passion. There is purpose. And I pray that for all of us. Yes. You know, that when we spend that time with God, man, what comes out of us from the overflow of that time with him? Yes. We just want to be able to tell people. Yes. Man, this is what God has done for me. And that's Mm -hmm. the testimony. Mm -hmm. So, and nobody can refute that. You know, that's, that's what God has done for me. And, this is my testimony. So praise God. Okay, so <sighs> this is you, my testimony. Right from death to life. Who is that? What is that? That's Elevation. Baby, <laughs> run my door. I'm looking at you, sing Chris with Brown. You so bad, Chris Brown. Stephen. Yes, they wrote that one. I think. Okay. I think. Do you guys all? Do you guys have like an underground worship cool guy club? Like, is that? I don't like, think it's not a cool guy club. I mean, not, at I don't all. mean to say that. But I mean I would like say, the dorks. I would, you know, and like I would y'all say, get together. Oh, we all are dorks for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody is, you know, <laughs> but I would say like, there's a really sweet with, with a lot of, uh, with all every, we're all kind of on the same team. We I all know. want, we all just want each other to write songs that we can sing with our churches, yeah. you know? And so if we get to be and and we all love writing, I love it by, by we all, it's just all these different crews, you know, there's, there's, there's no, the there's no wall, you know, there's the elevation crew, there's the Bethel crew, there's, um, but it's not like, it's just an open, we're all the family of God. And I think that has really taken shape over the last 10 years of like, there's not like you're doing your thing. I do my no, thing. It's not like a dance battle crew. It's not. No. Sometimes um, it I feel like this cool is teeing was, us though. up perfectly for a dance battle. <laughs> Um, we got to get to the announcement because yes. talking about bringing together yes, people my that just love thing. to worship, Phil Wickham. Wait, what was us, that? That's my drum Oh, that was a drum. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was my tambourine. <laughs> I thought it was like a really aggressive cat purr. <laughs> no, I'm not a big fan of cats. Okay. Phil Wickham is about to make an announcement. Speaking of coming together, coming like together. worship leaders, For times of worship this yes. August. I am so, so, so excited. I'm going to be doing a tour with my good brother, friend, the sweetheart, the incredibly gifted Brandon Lake. Come on. Me and him are co-headlining this summer worship nights tour that we hope or kind of the dream is make it like an annual thing. But okay. you haven't heard that. No one said that. No. Um, I, and they also KB, listening. who's this incredible hip hop oh. artist that has his heart of gold and preaches like no. I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. He's coming out. He's going to be a part of the whole night. Um, but yeah, Brandon, you guys, you guys all know Brandon Lake. He's like on every song with everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he's if you, there's a Maverick City song, there's Brandon. If there's yeah. an Elevation song, there's Brandon. Um, and it's because he's he got he, God has given him so much awesome stuff to carry, and he mm. carries it with so much grace. I respect him so much. Uh, but I remember getting a text from a, a fellow co-writer. This must have been six, seven years ago now. Um, saying, hey, there's this young guy from. Carolina, he's pretty special. Can I get us all on a text thread? He's he's showing me the song he's working on. Yeah, and uh, and he says he's a fan of you, Phil. I'm like, yeah, sure. That uh, is he cool? Like, are you sure you should get my number? <laughs> he's like, no, no, he's cool, he's cool. Yeah. And so um, he sends uh, he gets us all on a text thread, and uh, I see the number pop up, and I see this voice memo pop up, and it's him at a guitar singing, and I knew immediately. You just know, you know, mm-hmm. when you hear like. He's got something so special, and God has given him some incredible gifting. Hmm. Uh, but you can hear in his voice just the sincerity and the honesty. Sometimes you just know right away. Yeah. And I remember th- texting him like, "What's your name again, bro? <laughs> Brandon." <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, you got something so special. I cannot wait to see what God does yeah. in your life." And we've been friends ever since, and it's been awesome to see just God 
him carry what God has given him. And uh, but I, Lord is going to give me like a older brother heart for him in a way. Mm. And uh, and so to to now go out together, kind of like hand, arm in arm, so to speak, yeah. like and going for it in these twelve cities across the country in August. I cannot wait. We are so expectant, especially mm. in this day and age and this time for this season, yeah. as the church gets together to take hold of those promises, wherever two or more are gathered, he's going to be there, that mm. he dwells in the praise of his people. Mm. All the, We're just going to speak scripture and sing yeah. to Jesus and ask if anybody wants to come to know him. And I'm just so excited. Yeah. How do you, as you're, you're holding this tour and you guys are making plans to do it, how much responsibility do you feel to create not a concert, but a time of worship for thousands of your closest friends in one place. Um, in one in one sense, I feel full responsibility. Yeah. Or co responsibility with Brandon because that's like it's our job to to kind of push the uh, put the wind in the sail, so to speak, saying sure. this is the vision. But when I say full responsibility, I don't feel full pressure at all mm-hmm. because I don't because it's so our hearts to do it. And it's so like what we want this night to be um, is the church, the body of Christ getting together to sing out to him that I don't feel stress or pressure or like, how are we going to do this? Yeah, I feel responsibility. I always, ever since I was young, my parents were worship leaders. I remember when I first started leading worship youth mm-hmm. group, mm-hmm. 23 kids. That mom, it went so awesome. I hit all the right chords. It was so cool. <laughs> Philip, you never have an ego about this. My mm-hmm. mom, you're like, <laughs> God gave you an anointing and he can take it away. Like that's our, that's my mom, you know. I love it. She's not that intense. Mom, I love you. She listens to you. Mama so she, you're listening. <laughs> love you, mom. Lisa Wickham. But uh but she would. She would keep it real. And uh, mm. from a young age, it's just like I've always never, I've never taken it lightly what God has given me to yeah. do, and I never will. Mm. Um but it's just my true not because I'm holy or anything, just because I've found that's where I'm supposed to live. Is it's just my true joy to yeah. create moments where people can encounter Jesus and lift them up through music and mm-hmm. song and and, uh, and so that's, that's not, that's not, uh, it's not hard. Yeah. It's not a pressure, but it's responsibility. Yeah. Know? Okay. I know that we're running short on time, so I got a couple more questions left for you. Yes. Um, reflect a little bit if you can, um, with what you saw and heard about what happened at Asbury mm-hmm. in, sen- in the sense of worship and yes. just a raw hunger for the Lord. Mm-hmm. How, how do you experience that as a worship leader as well? You mean like off the stage or in any situation? Yeah, like I, I just wonder. Like there was so there was so, everything was like stripped down, and it was just a a thirsting and a hunger of kids coming together, and it drew yes. so many people. Like, how do you reflect on that as well, a worship leader? It's it's like this is a little different because it's people are buying tickets and all that. But I've got this tour called the Sing Along Tour yeah. that I'm actually on right now as we talk. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll be I'm joining up with Matt Marr and Leland and Tiffany from Elevation is yeah. out with us this month. And it's just the four of us and a piano player. Mm. And, uh, and and I've been doing that for um, almost every two years for the last 14 years, some kind of tour like that. Yeah. Uh, because I find that I I can it's it's all, when there's so much stuff is going on and the days are so full and is the band all ready and he's getting sick. Let's replace this guitar player. And no, no, this piece of this lighting went down. You know, there's a lot to think about the bigger yeah. something is. And so to, to kind of sim- to simplify, even in that way, from what I do, uh, I, I call and I say it from the stage. I just say, Hey, sorry, sorry if you wanted like lights, camera action tour, like that's not what this is. And yeah. people all laugh like, cause that's not, they know why they're there, but it's just, it, it's the, the most incredible, beautiful instrument in the room is the family of God. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a verse in Colossians. I, re- I remember the, uh, okay, I, I don't want to misquote it, so I'm going to pull it up, but okay. the Colossians 3.16 is really easy to remember because there's another 3.16 we uh-huh. all know very well. But um, is it okay? Am I wasting? I'm sorry, I'm wasting time. No, you're time. fine. You, you can edit this, right? No. <laughs> you edit. I'll just sing along while you're fine. No, okay, <laughs> no. Uh, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom mm-hmm. through psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Mm. And I, I just actually posted about it today because yeah. um, these sing-along nights are, it remind me of that verse because the, that verse wasn't written to worship. It wasn't written to Brandon Lake and Phil Wickham and Chris Tomlin. It was written yeah. to the church yeah. to sing to each other and to teach each other and to preach to each other. Mm. And I think there's something not just beautiful sounding about mm. the people hearing the faith of their community rise up in song. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. But I think why it's so beautiful and moving is because there's a spiritual like command and mm. spiritual thing happening yeah. where like 
the, my neighbor and stranger and brother and sister around me are preaching to me of, of whatever we might be singing. And the first song that came to mind, because we sing it, is when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. We sing yeah. that song, Battle Belongs. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing, it's one thing to look up at the, at the, the guy that you came to see and hear. It. It's like, great, I like when Phil sings this or yeah. Brandon sings his song. But it's another thing when you kind of pull back, the, pull back a little mm. bit and let the family of God preach to each other and even yeah. to me. And so that's what I say. Like I, I quote that verse and I say, I, I'm so excited about these nights because you all, mm. family of God, get to preach to me for yeah. once. I get to hear you all singing back the, the truth of who God is. Um, we're letting the word of Christ dwell in us richly through wisdom as we sing to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And so that more than just singing along to create something beautiful, like the, the people around you need to hear your faith. Yeah. You need to hear your hope and need to be taught and reminded once again of who God is and what he wants to do and who we are in him. Mm-hmm. So that's why this is a sing along tonight. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I think can happen so well when it's so simple and stripped down like Asbury. There's not a me there. There's yeah. not a Chris Tomlin. So that's like, great. One distraction out of the way. Yeah. There, there wasn't any money paid to be there. It was, I'm not expecting to be entertained. Another distraction out of the way. Yeah. There's not a great band or great life. Like for me, it's another distraction out of the way. And all we're do all, you can't call this anything else other than the family of God seeking the presence of God yeah. and seeing out his, his name for his, cause he's worth it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and sometimes I, I love the lights, camera, action. That's yeah. kind of the worship nights with Brandon Lake are going to be a little bit of that, like yeah. big lights and big rooms. And I can't wait. And God is glorified through that. Mm. But we also, I, th- I think we need the other side too in our lives, um, whether it's with people or even in the quiet of our own little, little corner of the house that we get to with the Lord, just to let the Lord speak back into our hearts and be yeah. quiet enough for to hear him and to say that we love him. Uh, so I don't I don't know if that's a great answer to all of that, but I love seeing what happened in Asbury. I love that it ignited. I'm seeing videos of other college campuses too, saying a, a hunger. Of, yeah. we I want that too. Yeah. But we don't need to bring in the the latest thing. We don't need to raise money to rent out the the cool spot. We all we need is the presence of God. Let's go meet out on the field and sing. Yeah. And it's so amazing, especially for young people who maybe even haven't experienced that kind of. Christianity, that kind of moment mm. um, to be hungering after him. And it makes me excited for the future. Yeah. You are so in your sweet spot of who God has created you to be and equipped you and how he is using you. And it's so fun to play your songs, Phil. Oh, you're so Because kind. you have equipped all of us for three minutes at a time just to have a moment of worship mm. of, of who God is. And not just the songs that you've written. You came out with a new book this year. What in the world? What in the world? I don't, I okay, don't just even like I gotta know. You've sentence. got so many songs. You've got one book. Is there going to be a follow up book? Another I, devotional on I prayer? I don't know. I, I I would have said no after I turned in that last book because <laughs> a book is a lot more words than a song. <laughs> you have to write a lot more words. Yeah, I'm used to like that much words <laughs> on one page. You know, uh, but it was so um, for for every every time I've heard since that book got put out. Yeah. From people who've read it that have been and by blessed. the way, we're talking about on our knees. Oh yeah, I've forty got a, days. It's it's like a, it's a devotional forty yes. days of, on prayer, and yes. you're like, Phil, on prayer, why isn't on music or worship? It, it's like short story. I've got a song called Battle Belongs. I was so inspired by night after night, people singing it out in faith, and story after story after story. I mean, overwhelmingly so compared to any other song I've, I've ever put out. Yeah, I think it was also because it was right in the middle of 2020. People just saying this is okay, that God through me has given them a prayer to sing in a really hard time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in hospital rooms and grave sites and in and, and situations of job loss. And I'm going to fight by worshiping. I'm not going to, mm. f- this, this is how my response is going to be to this storm. Yeah. Um, I was so blessed by it all, but also so challenged mm. to think like, man, I, I wrote this song. I grew up in church. I believe that God makes stars and moves mountains and loves me. But I, if I'm really honest, I don't pray like it mm. sometimes i do yeah as a last resort mm. I, if i was really on, like yeah but it's not wasn't my immediate like let's go to god mm-hmm. it's like let's try this try this try this try get all our okay well let's ask god you know yeah. like i just found that was me mm. and i just felt god pulling my heart into a deeper relationship with him in prayer and trust and communion yeah and so i had no idea i was writing a book or it was going to become a book i just wanted to grow and yeah. so i went started going through the scriptures learning about prayer, reigniting my heart through prayer. And then through a series of conversations and relationships, a book started being written and mm-hmm. now it's on our knees and it, uh, 
when I, like I said, when I turned in the manuscript, I thought, well, that's the last time I'm doing that, you know, but now I have a feeling it's not Phil, but now it, it's just, <laughs> it's because of the, ex, the vulnerability mm. and the digging and the pouring in and the honesty. And because of how that has connected with people in a different way than what music can. Yeah. It's like, well, Lord, I definitely won't close myself off if you want me to do it again. Yeah. Cause I thought I didn't know what I was doing, but you must've done something in that whole situation yeah. that, um, that, for a couple for some people that was supposed to be and so if something else is supposed to be i'm i'm available yeah you are available you are available to write songs i'll be here and to let car saleswomen know it's done, who jesus I'll just is go make coffees at a starbucks i can see that the beanie is like working with that <laughs> phil wickham here at the k love studios thank you so much for all of your songs so many people have written me and just shared their testimonies i'm sure that they've written you too of what your songs have meant to them mm-hmm. so I feel like I'm this person to be able to hand over a whole bunch of heartfelt thank yous. Oh, thank you for writing kind. the songs and thank you for leading us in worship well, of God with your to joy. you and Caleb for being a partner and letting them be a part of people's lives and all you listeners out there that have reached out and come to come to sing with me. It's just the hugest, not false, just hugest honor in the world yeah. more than ever. I'm just so, so thankful for what God has given me to do and I love y'all and hope to see you on the road and let's, Fill rooms up with singing. And this summer is this is going to be an outdoor tour this or indoor? Summer, uh, it's I all just need in, to plan my outfit. It's all indoor. It's gonna, okay, I think it's all arenas. Got it. And so like, Got it. Okay. I know we'll be. <laughs> <laughs> you can do your indoor arena, cool, 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 cool. kind of rave outfit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but we'll be in Nashville. We'll be I in like uh, uh, New Jer- like outside of New York, Chicago, okay. Minneapolis. Um, raise your hand if I'm saying your city. Mm-hmm. Uh, DFW. Yes. Tampa. New okay. Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. No, I knew what you were saying the first time. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so did they. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and other places too. It's just 12 cities this time. West okay. Coast, I love you. Not West Coast this time, but okay. looking at you for 24. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. We'll see you out on the road. Thank you. Yes.